Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble. I am so happy to be here with Aria Johnson. We're going to talk about everything from the music business to mindset to keeping ourselves from burning out, exploring all kinds of uh, different passions, learning how to balance this with a real life with kids and all that stuff. So we're going to get into that. Um, and to start off, I would just love to, I always love to get people's story at the beginning because I think it really gives some great context. So Aria, if you want to just kind of let us know like how you started out in music and um, where you went from there and kind of how that got you to where you are today. I know that's probably a lot, but that's fine. Don't You don't <laughs> have to abridge it or anything. We want to know. Oh, okay. Um, well, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for having me on the show. I know you've done probably over a thousand podcasts. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I've done <laughs> over, a, I've done over 1500 on the women of substance show alone. So yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Crazy. So, I mean, guys, we're in the presence of a legend. If it's your first time <laughs> tuning into her, to her podcast, they're great. You got to stick around. Um, so, okay, I started in the music business. I always knew I wanted to be a singer since I was five years old. And um, I became a professional singer at 15 um, by the time I could convince my parents to give me singing lessons. Before that, I was just kind of singing around town and anywhere that would let me. But once I got singing lessons and I got my foot in the door, there was some connections there. I started booking a girl group that I was in. Like, I remember the first gig was at Nordstrom. We got paid like $500 in front of the piano. I was like 15 and we had my little girl group doing swing music, but we started getting paid and doing it professionally. I moved to LA uh, after college. I have a business degree. Um, I was in a girl group for seven years and I was like, all right, I wanna go solo now. We had toured, done all that. Moved to LA, did the whole thing that probably a lot of you are doing, which is trying to make it. Um, I was on a music competition show called Star Tomorrow. It was just like American Idol, but for NBC. And I won 13 out of the 14 episodes. Um, I, I opened for Ludacris. I toured. I put out an album. I, I did the thing. But as you guys know, it's such a challenging business that for me, I ended up deciding that I wanted to change directions. And I was just kind of like, I, I lost the love for it. And that's why today I hope I can give you guys some advice that helps you stay motivated and take care of yourself so that you don't lose the love for the business because it is hard and you are an entrepreneur. And I have been through it since I was a kid. I mean, I've been in the business now 25 years, the music business. So once I quit being an artist, I, I developed my company, The Golden Voice, which is artist development and voice coaching for artists trying to make it. And I wanted to help people not have to go through what I went through and see if I could just teach them and, and help others. And then I did that for a very long time. I did TV. I was the music expert on a TV show called Beverly Hills Pond for five seasons. So I sort of segued into acting um, while running the Golden Voice. And now I am segueing into speaking on stages around the world to help women with um, basically perform at your peak. So peak performance minus the burnout because I personally burned out at the peak of my career and crashed and burned. And I, I'm here to tell you guys today how to avoid that and sort of how to come back from that because it, it seems to be a thing happening to everybody. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I mean, musicians especially really need this because we have to work so hard to, you know, get the gig. And then there's so much work at the gig. You know, it's like it, it does feel like sometimes every step of the way is scratching and clawing. And, you know, yeah. and, and when you you do finally start to get traction, sometimes by the time we get to that point where we're burnt out and that just sucks yeah. because it's like you've worked so hard for the thing and now you have the thing but you don't love the thing anymore yeah. so yeah we want to save all of you guys from that um i just wanted to go back to a little bit of your story in the beginning so you you got a business degree what made you think i should get a business degree when you wanted to be a musician 
Honestly, I was... I graduated high school at 17 years old and my parents are like, you're not moving to LA because I lived in Northern California. They were like, absolutely not. We will do everything in our power to stop that. So I like the good little girl, like a lot of us are, we're good girls. I listened to my parents and I spent five years in college getting a business degree. I was still singing. Like I was in a girl group, we were touring. So there was a lot of cutting class. Mm. But um, I the, I moved two weeks after I graduated college with that degree because I figured, hey, at least I would know the business side of music as far as understanding how business works, which really came in handy in the music business because as you guys know, and especially Brie, I mean, you know, it's all contracts and legal jargon and that's the unsexy side of it. And as artists, we're like, oh, I'm just all about the music. I just want to vibe. And it's like, yeah, and then you get taken advantage of or you don't make any money off your music. So learning the business is kind of, it's absolutely necessary, especially now. Yeah, that was really smart. And even though it was kind of like, because your parents wanted you to go to college. I mean, I I think that it, yeah, because then you weren't that vulnerable artist that just wanted to make it at all costs. You understood the cost behind it before you said yes to anything. Well, I don't know that I understood the cost at 22 years old in LA. There was a lot of sharks, but I definitely yeah. learned it over time and over, you know, a decade. By the time I was a decade in, I was able to tell other people like, hey, work with this person. Don't work with this person. Uh, studios are soundproof, ladies. Two studios are soundproof. Don't go alone if you're recording with a guy. That kind of stuff is not sexy, but it will save your life. Oh, yeah, that is so good. And and true that like because the business there are a lot of sharks like finding someone that you can trust that can give you referrals of people that they trust is Mm -hmm. gold but that's takes a while right you show up in LA you don't know anybody yeah when I moved to LA I interviewed a hundred producers before I was able to find someone I could work with I went through a hundred producers I kept a list because I was very like I'm a Virgo I like to write everything down (laughs) Well, so what was your criteria between the hundred that made you decide to pick one of them? Well, let me tell you what I would do if I did it now. What I did then was I was broke. Uh, My day job, I was working at BET, actually. Um, (laughs) It's black entertainment television. And I was just like getting as close to music as I could. And I had to pay the bills um, while I was trying to make it. But um, what I would do differently now versus what I did then, then I was all about finding the cheapest producer. Mm. It was like saving money. I was trying to get people to work for free. I was putting ads on Craigslist and um, meeting a bunch of shady people. And what I have told my clients now is like, just pay for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, look, you can go on the internet and license a song for $30. Or you could hire uh, like a cheap producer for $1,500 to produce you a track. Or you can go into a studio and spend $5,000 and have a live band. There are ways to do it, but you are better off having a day job and just paying the cost to get your music produced than trying to have people like, oh, let's write together, let's vibe together. It's just drama. And especially as women, since it's mostly women here, Um, a lot of times, you know, it's hard for people not to fall in love with you if you're a woman and you're singing your heart out and you're all sexy and, and, and just vulnerable. And so it's like, just get a day job, freaking shovel dirt. If you have to work at McDonald's, but pay for your music, you know, make sure not to pay it all up front. And then you'll get your, your tracks if they want the other half, if it's attractive enough, if they want to keep their lights on, they'll go for the music and it won't be the free track they're doing with you. So pay them. Yeah, no, that's really good. And then you can, you know, be sure and get your contracts and all that in order. So you own all your stuff. There's not going to be this like, oh, well, I gave it to you for free. So I own part of your master. Yep. I own 50%. (laughs) That's Uh, what producers uh, want, right? uh, So, yeah, that's great. That's great advice. A lot to be learned. And it's not as scary as it seems. And it doesn't have to be as hard as it seems when you have somebody like Brie to be your mentor, like taking her courses online or you hire like an artist development slash somebody as a coach. But when you're looking for a manager to work for you for free, they're not making any money. It, again, it's so sad that it boils down to money, but I had to learn this the hard way. I mean, I, I learned it, I wasted a lot of time, but I guess one thing that's really important to me is it's not a waste of time if you learn something. Mm. Like failure is part of the job. So every day you should be asking yourself, how did I fail today? And if the answer is I didn't, then you're not growing. You should be getting rejection every single day as an artist and really as anyone trying to start a business. 
get rejected, that means you're getting closer to your goal. You're learning from it. So every single failure, just like learning to walk, when you're crawling and you, you watch a little like one-year-old, they just, they fall, they hit their head on the table, they get back up, they get back up. That's what it's like in the music industry. And for all of you guys, you have more resilience and more stick to than almost any other industry because you are getting just reject and every day you have to bring yourself to get up in the morning no one's paying you to do this and follow your dreams so know that failure is good it's a stepping stone even if it doesn't feel like it yeah no i agree with that it's just so much easier to think that way when you're 10 years in and you can look I back know. and go i'm so <laughs> right i'm so glad that that happened because that saved me from this or you know it taught me this whereas the people that are just going out there and it's like you forget that when you're a kid, like failing was good because like you said, you were learning how to walk. You can't just get up and walk. But yeah. when you're 22, you think like the world is ending if you fail. Oh, yeah. I would get like knock it out of bed for two weeks after I like got kicked off the show, you know, to, when I lost the star tomorrow or, uh, you know, I was working with Beyonce's producer. I won't say his name. And he stole all my music because I didn't want to be his girlfriend. Like those kind of mm. things as what happens day to day. It's so embarrassing to admit, but since we're all women here, I feel like we have to keep it real. And I went through a phase where I was on top of my career, like as far as in the acting business, I didn't like make it super big in singing. I made it as an actor. Now I'm the music expert on the show, Beverly Hills Pond. Um, it's got five seasons. We're on billboards. Like I'm being flown around to red carpets. Like I'm even though I'm, it's a reality show, I was like, oh, I'm kind of like a star now. It was weird. But I ended up hitting rock bottom because I worked myself into a point of where my body couldn't take it anymore. And so it doesn't matter if you're 22 and you have lots of energy or you're 42 or you're 62. You have to take care of yourself. And when I hit that rock bottom, sorry, I'm circling back. So that's that creative mind. When I hit that rock bottom, I kept asking, why is this happening to me? Just like I asked when I was 22 and I got kicked off a show or whatever, or a producer didn't work out. Why is this happening to me? I didn't get this record deal. I was doing that and I was in my 40s at this point. Why is this happening to me? I'm so sick. I was so sick that I thought I was going to die. The doctors thought, oh, well, you're just, they just wrote me off. And what I realized was, and this is something you can use, is I had to start asking myself, how is this happening for me? Hmm. Right? I was in the middle of hell. I was bleeding from the throat. I had to give up my business in artist development and vocal coaching because I couldn't talk. I lost my voice. I was bedridden. The uh, doctors had no idea what was wrong with me. I had a paralyzed stomach. Like it was like head to toe, just shut down. And I was a mother at this point. And so that lesson is something that at 22 you can take. So when you're sitting there in that hell, in that misery, feel it, feel your feelings. And then when you're done, say, okay, instead of why is this happening to me? Ask yourself, how is this happening for me? And you freestyle write. You just write in your journal, how is this happening for me? And I swear when I started that question, it must have been a month of everyday writing where I couldn't come up with an answer. Mm. Why, like, how is this happening for me? And I was like, stupid question, you know? But I just kept writing until I found it. And then for me, I found it. It was so that I could help people, like help women learn to not burn out. So like, it doesn't always have to be, you know, it might sound cheesy, but it's just truth. Find the reason. How is this happening for me? And if you don't ask that question, you will burn out because you'll be like, it's just too hard. Nothing ever works out. Nothing goes my way. And your brain will be like, you should quit then. And your friends will be like, well, how long do you give yourself? What, what age do you, I'm sure you've heard these questions, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, what, I mean, I'm not trying to be rude, but like what, a, and this is like your best friend. You're like, bitch, <laughs> I don't know if I can cuss on here, but <laughs> right? So you well, and, and I think it depends it. on what give yourself means, like, right? How it, much time? Like, you know? can, does it mean give yourself to succeed at some like massive level or right. is it, you know, that you're going to have great fulfillment through your music while still right. doing these other things and you don't have to be some major star? Right. We can't all be Beyonce. <laughs> right. <laughs> or whatever. It's just the example I'm thinking of because she's what, a billionaire. Right. But there's so many jobs in the music industry you can do. I mean, and if you talk to most of the people in the business side, they're all musicians. Yep. I mean, talk talk to A&R guys. They're like, yeah, I was in a band. <laughs> now I find them. Yep. No, it makes sense. So like looking back, do you think there were the warning signs that you were going to hit that total burnout, that you were going to like lose your health like that? or? Uh 
like, can you give anybody some advice on how can they see this coming? Absolutely. So I had had a kid, um, you know, this is five seasons after the show. I'm waiting for season six and seven to be picked up. So I'm already like, you know, I guess a star to, on some level. Like, I don't think of it like that, but for the sake of this conversation, um, and every morning I'm like getting up and I'm trying to be super mom. I'm like running on adrenaline and caffeine and not eating breakfast because I'm like, oh, I'm intermittent fasting and I have to like, you know, run around and take my kid at what to preschool or whatever it was. I wasn't taking care of myself. I was working with clients in artist development, trying to help them follow their dreams, like back to back to back to back. And I was making their problems my problems. And mm -hmm. I was laying awake at night thinking about the artist that wants to jump off a bridge and just devastated. like. I am an empath and I think most artists are. Um, and so that means I just like take on the problems of others. And I, they're, all the signs were there. I was running on adrenaline. I was not feeding myself properly. I was putting everybody else first except myself. And so I had to learn. It, it took me being in bed and like staying there for, it took years of doctors and meds and self-help and all of that stuff for me to figure out, oh my God, like I actually have to take care of myself. Like I have to do the woo, like I got to do the yoga and the meditation and the sauna. There's so many things I do now that are just part of my life. And before I thought they were selfish. I mm. used to think it was selfish to go to the gym on a Saturday because it's like family time. It's like, how is that? So what's more selfish is when mama is crazy right, <laughs> or burned out and women like, I see you. I freaking see you. I was talking to a friend today. She's about to crash and burn because she's working so hard. And I said, why do you do it? Why do you take on so many clients? And she said, I, I don't know, because I, I don't want to let them down. She doesn't need the money. Mm. I don't want to let them down. You know what? If you are letting yourself down at the cost of making someone else feel better, that is failure. The only person you shouldn't be letting down, I think, is yourself. And it sounds selfish to say it out loud, but it's not. Because if you have integrity, you're a good person, you wanna make a difference in the world, like you cannot do that from an empty well. No, you can't. And I mean, you look at the long-term consequences, eventually you won't be able to serve them anyway because you'll have burnt yourself into the ground. Yep, and you'll quit. And I watched lots of amazing artists quit the business over the, mm -hmm. I don't know, de over a decade of just being in LA, like signed artists, opening for, a-listers watched them just be like, I can't do it. So it's like, oh my gosh, is there a little hand? Did you see a high five saying go up? No. Sorry. My Zoom, for some reason, every time I'm in a session, like it, okay, we'll ignore it. <laughs> Sorry for that cut you now have to do. <laughs> That's okay. So, oh, just one second. Okay, where were we? Um, we were just talking about why our artists were burning out. Yeah, they're they're burning out because especially as women is you're trying to be everything to everyone and you're not taking care of yourself. And I developed sort of a three step plan to take care of yourself that's easy to remember because it seems it's so big. Like, oh, what is this self care BS? <laughs> well, it's it's every day. It's a lifestyle. And so in my talks as a you know inspirational speaker now, that's what I talk about. And it's the morning what you do during the day and in the evening. And I have lots of tips and tricks and they work. If you mm. can't stop to take one minute to do breathing, your body will make you stop. You'll catch mm. a cold, something will go down. You have to stop. And if you, you'd like at some point, I can go through some of those techniques. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to ask like, as an artist development person, like, what did you see in artists that was like the most problematic? Was it that they were constantly touring? Was it that they were, um, I don't know, they just like could never stop to like celebrate their wins? Like what was it that was stressing them out so much? Okay, the, this is an interesting question because it doesn't matter how famous you are. The Because I worked with beginners and I worked with people who you would know. Um, the main thing was they didn't know who they were as an artist. Mm. And that's not something they could admit to the world. They're like, I like all me. I like pop music. I like rock music. I like country music. I like r and And they were like, they felt like they had to fit into a box that they didn't want to be in. And they were scared to step outside the box and fail. And they were scared of what everyone else would think. Hmm. That was the biggest problem. That is and interesting. That's why 
that's why this self-help stuff is so important because in order to figure out who you are at that given time, right? Like let's say it's time to make another album. You need to go deep within. Nobody else can tell you that. Like artist development, I wasn't here to like a label would do, say, okay, let's uh, slap pink bows on her and now that's her brand. No, I was here to say, who are you at this time? And let's pull it out of you. And you're only you're gonna know that. And how are you gonna know that? You're gonna go climb a mountain and think about it. You're gonna do the boring stuff that nobody wants to do. And this is the stuff that's gonna save you because if you are pretending to be someone you're not to please them, it won't work. People see through it. You might even have some success, but you'll be miserable. Mm. I think that's the thing that that's hard to convince them. They think if I have the success, I won't be miserable because I want this success. <laughs> I used to think that too. Mm. You know, what's interesting is that, and I'm going to start with a little story is that most of my clients, they were also afraid that success would turn them into a bad person. Mm. And what I said is success doesn't change you. Money doesn't change you and fame doesn't change you. It simply amplifies who you are. If you're a good person, now you can do a lot of good with that money. You're donating 20,000 meals to, to the homeless for Thanksgiving. If you're a crappy person, you're stepping on more people. Mm. So who you are does not change. I don't know if I answered the question properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's definitely part of the answer. I think that they think the success is what is going to give them the validation. Okay, and, yeah. And then they, you know, they don't want to, they're afraid to go out on a limb and, and be something that might be more authentic to them. Because if that's not successful, then that might yeah. say something about them too. Okay, yeah. So back to your question. Um, the second part of that is that how you feel about yourself doesn't change when you're famous. Mm. Woo! Yeah. You don't know it till you experience it. How It's kind of like if you talk to somebody who's lost 100 pounds, they'll say, yeah, I can wear cute clothes now, but I still felt like the the bigger person, like the who I was before. Mm. Because your soul is your soul and your childhood traumas are there. And fame and money is not a Band-Aid. Maybe temporarily you'll be like, Bleh. I'm rich. I'm flying on jets. But like that, that goes away after the concert. Like you're, you're getting an adoration from 20,000, whatever, 10,000 people. And then you have to go home and go to bed by yourself. Mm -hmm. And unless you've got some random stranger or a partner in your bed, you're still alone with your thoughts. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, I could tell people all day money and fame doesn't make you happy and they'll disagree. I, I've heard, I heard a celebrity tell me um, who is less of a celebrity than others. Oh yeah she can go cry in her Ferrari. Oh. And I said, I said, girl, a Ferrari is still just a piece of plastic at the end of the day and metal. I said, pain is pain mm -hmm. and pain is relative. The more money and the more fame you have, the bigger your problems are because now you have a staff of like, I don't know, 50 people that are like not going to get paid if you screw it up. Mm -hmm. It's a big, it's a big deal. It doesn't, it doesn't make you happy. True. So the answer is what does. And I spent at least 10 years researching what does make you happy. I read every book on it. I studied psychology. I wanted to know what is that answer because I knew it came from within, but what does that mean? If you talk to religious people, they'll say it's God. If you talk to yogis, they'll say it's meditation. Everybody has the answer, but nobody has the answer. So what I found is that happiness is taking care of yourself. Think of yourself as a five-year-old kid. I want you all right now to picture your five-year-old self. Like think of a picture, maybe four, five, six years old. And like, what did you want at that age? You, you just wanted love. You wanted your parents to love you, right? Well, now you are your parent. You have to reparent yourself. And what does love mean? It doesn't mean, oh, I love myself. I'm so beautiful. It means taking care of yourself. It means eating when you're hungry, sleeping when you're tired, and going to the dang gym, even though you don't want to. It means saying no when you, you know, like if you're 22 and somebody wants to go out Friday and Saturday night and you know you're going to screw up a gig, saying no, it's discipline. Love is discipline. We take our children and we say, no, you can't eat that candy before bed because you're going to feel like crap. But then with ourselves, we're like, yeah, I would like a nightcap, please. Uh, I'll make it a double. And then I'm like, oh, I slept like crap. Like we have to take care of ourselves. And that is where you find true happiness is the whole like cheesy loving yourself. 
it's an action. That's what I found. I I totally agree. I think I'm going to be a little vulnerable here. For myself, I'm always at war with, because you said that whole thing about the nightcap, right? I'm always yeah. at war with like, I know I might not feel that good tomorrow, but I'll have more fun today. And I'm not saying that this happens all the time, but every once in a while, I'm thinking to myself, you can't just always be the goody two shoes and always do the thing that's like super healthy. Cause I am pretty health conscious and stuff, but like, sometimes I just want to like let my hair down and have fun. So how do you balance that? That's such a great question. And, um, for me being the, like, you know, I was like the pop star, the rock star, whatever I wanted to be naughty and like party and, um, have fun. And I'm such, I'll tell you, I'm a party girl. I love it. I'm like, the music comes on. I'm ready to dance. I, I'm the la I, my husband's like, we got to go. And I'm like, oh, but we're having fun. That's how I've always been. I don't want to leave yet. So I get it. But what I've learned through this whole or nightmare of an ordeal is that there's past me, there's past Aria, there's present Aria, and there's future Aria. So is present Aria going to F it up for future Aria? No, I'm going to do a favor for future Aria right now. I'm just going to do her a favor and maybe just like not have that last drink. It's really hard when you're drinking, but whatever mm -hmm. the example is. So it's doing yourself a favor, like a favor for future Aria might be um, like laying out your, your lunch because you know you have to take it in the morning. You know you're going to be hungover. So you, you lay out your lunch the night before so that when you get in the car, you're like ready to go. Um, and past Aria with the one with the trauma is the one who says right now I need to have fun. So there is a balance. Look, I love to have fun. Um, like I'll tell you right now, if you and I were hanging out, I would be like, let's do this, but there has to be balance. And, and the balance is loving yourself enough to take care of future you because right now me wants to eat the entire bag of Cheetos with the entire bottle of wine. And then tomorrow me is like, why the hell did you do uh -huh. that? Right? Yeah. So the balance is so, so it's like almost being deliberate about it. I'm not saying to be in control of everything, but sometimes I'm like, all right, tonight I'm going out and I'm going to stay up till 2 a.m. I know I'm going to suffer, but it's a choice. It's a, it's not just letting life happen to me. And and I like your your suggestion about the lunch the next day, because what it does happen is you can get into a spiral. So you you do the thing, you go out, you have the fun, you get up, you don't feel so good. And then you're like, oh, I'm too tired to make lunch. I'll just yeah. find something and I'll go to a drive through, you know, and then it just kind of it keeps getting worse. Right. Yep. And then you're like, oh, I'm hungover. So I'm going to have some wine again. And then now you're on the two day hangover. It's it's a <laughs> it's it's not about perfection, like loving yourself is not at all about perfection it's about grace and if you have true grace for yourself you'll say oh i did that thing i shouldn't have done last night um maybe i'll just be a little better today or maybe i'll say screw it sometimes i'm like sit down with the tub of ice cream i'm not <laughs> like one of those i i only eat healthy because i have to like mm. my stomach was paralyzed i i don't want to say it still is because who knows right but like if i eat the wrong things i feel like crap but sometimes i'm like you know what i need to emotionally eat that right now and that's okay. And that's the problem is that women, we're taught that it's all or nothing, especially musicians. We're rock stars. It's all or nothing. But it doesn't have to be, especially if you take those steps every single day, those consistent steps toward being who you want to be. It doesn't matter then if you want to have a night out and party or, I don't know, screw up your career in some way. Like, it's, it's not fatal. It's, it's like a learning situation, right? Like, I want to go out. And like, I have a daughter, so like, I should be in bed at 930. You think that's cool? That's fun? No. So I want to go out, I stay out. I just don't stay out until three anymore. Yep. No, that's really, that's, that's <laughs> really, it's really helpful. And I think we all, we all have to deal with that balance. I mean, I have health issues too. So like, I would love, like enough. you said, I'd love to eat the good stuff all the time, but I can't, but giving yourself that opportunity to have it sometimes. Yeah you got to give yourself grace because otherwise then then you're almost like punning, punishing yourself the other direction. Yeah, then future you is punishing past you. Mm. Ooh, it gets crazy. Ooh, it does. That's crazy. Yeah. Actually, it's more like present you, right? Because now it's the yes. morning and it's present you is, is punishing past you. Like, what does that do? Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, I think success boils down to consistency. It doesn't matter what part of the music industry you're in or what part of life you're in. All it takes is doing the same things 
over and over and taking a mantra like, I am the most consistent person I know every day. Mm -hmm. I am the most consistent person I know. I have that written down in my notes, like where my to-do list is. And I'm like, every day I do the sauna whether I want to or not. And now I kind of want to. And I mm -hmm. meditate. I like hated meditation, I can't even tell you. But now I meditate and it's life changing, especially for artists, guys. Like, if you can clear your mind, you can have magic come through you in your writing. Mm. Just get, go on YouTube. It's five minutes. Like, do a anti anxiety meditation guided or do like a whatever you need. You can even do um, future self meditations, which I think are so cool, where you get to visualize you in the future, like your amazing best version of yourself. And then she comes and talks to you and gives mm. you advice. And those are all for cool. free on YouTube. Those are the kind of things that you have to put into place if you want long-term success. Because if you look at the music industry, like almost everybody's burning out. You see mm -hmm. them, oh, they went to rehab. Oh, they went to, they like passed out from exhaustion. It's, the struggle is real. And even for like the other jobs that aren't so like public, like every woman I know is exhausted and overwhelmed. We have to change that, guys. No one's going to do it for us. And I promise you, you will love everybody else around you more when you take those actions for yourself. Because love is not a feeling. Oh, I love myself. No, love is an action. Mm. What do you do for yourself? You think I want to go to the gym? Do I want? No, but I go. Like, no, I don't want to every day. But future me is like, so I put the, put the running shoes and the yoga pants by the bed. So when I get up, I have to put them on immediately. So I'm doing future me a favor. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I kind of set my schedule up. So most days I have to either walk to work or walk home from work. Ooh. And I do that because if I sit in an office all day and I haven't walked for an hour, my back will hate me. Right. You know, right. so I'm do even though I'd like, wouldn't I like to just get to work and start working? Yes. But I'm doing this for future me and my future back. <laughs> and, and what you know, and I can find things to do that are self-care on the way. You know, I could do my meditation on the way. I could do my prayers on the way. I could listen to some music I enjoy on the way. Yeah. And um, one thing to know about walking, the reason it's so calming is because your eyes move from left to right when you're looking at things. And it actually does very similar things that EMDR does, hmm. um, which is a th form of therapy. It's called electromagnetic what does the D stand for? Something therapy. They developed it for the Navy um, to heal people from PTSD. Um, and so if you're really stressed out, like go for a walk. <laughs> you just do yourself a favor. And you're right. I do what's called habit stacking. So what Bree's talking about is um, she could listen to a walking meditation. She could listen to a podcast and educate herself about whatever she's into. Um, or she can even make a phone call. But either way, you're getting two things done at the same time. And when it comes to self-help, you can have it stack. I do it all the time. I, I meditate in the sauna. You know, I'll journal in the sauna. I'll, um, I don't know, while you're taking a shower, you can turn it to cold at the end instead of, like, if you don't have an ice bath. Do it for, it's cold. It's horrible. You do it for, like, 30 seconds. Work your way up to three and a half minutes. But, like, mm -hmm. the data is clear. These are the kind of things that are going to make you perform at your peak. And, look, I, w I saw Pink the other day talking about how she does an ice bath after her tour after mm. concerts she gets in for like i think she said her record was six minutes oh man but the, the, they're, they're performing at their peak these are like world-class athletes to get to that level and if you're not striving to be a superstar it doesn't matter you still have to take care of yourself because 83 percent of autoimmune diseases are in women mm. really okay why is that there's theories out there, there's working theories, and there's a lot of data to support that it's because we don't take care of ourselves. For example, um, when was it? In the 90s, I forget his name, but they did a study with 10,000 patients from Kaiser. It's called the, eight, um, the ACE score, your adverse childhood experiences. Mm -hmm. And they tallied up like how many effed up things happened to you from like <laughs> your, you had a parent who got divorced or you got assaulted or whatever like happened to you that's a childhood trauma. You were bullied. Um, and the higher the score out of these 10,000 people that so they followed over decades, um, the higher your score of trauma, the higher your score of diseases. Wow. And like even cancer. And it's a replicable, um, it, it's a study that is real consistent they can do it again and again and just replicate it because trauma affects us so how do you get the trauma out of the body 
you have to do something. You have to move, whether it's work out or meditate or jump in an ice bath or a sauna or whatever moves you. You could go to yoga. Like this is all like woo woo. You could do breathing. This is like mm. one of the daytime things I recommend. You can count in, breathe in for four, hold for six, out for eight. Do that for two minutes. And another thing you can do during the day that um, piggybacks on Bree's walking, how she walks to and from work, is you can really only sit there and pay attention for about 50 minutes. That's what the research says. So get up. Get mm. up from your desk. Mm -hmm. 50, 55 minutes. Get up, walk around, stretch. Like, move your eyes. Because if you're, like, sitting around all day, like, no wonder you're depressed. No wonder you have anxiety. No wonder you're stressed. And that's taking care of yourself. If you work in a job where they're, like, mean about it, like, oh, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, I have to get a sip of – oh, my water's out. Like, take care of yourself. Yeah, I love all of that. Now – all you know the people that watch and listen to this are artists and maybe they're thinking oh all this consistency is going to drain the creativity out of me what do you have to say for that because I am a consistency person too but I can also see that some of the most creative people that I know are not that way are, are very spontaneous that's a that's a good question so speaking to consistency um, I heard uh, somebody talking the other day about Eminem and they were saying he carries a notebook with him everywhere he goes. And um, I think it was, what's his name? Rick Ross? Rick mm -hmm. Rubin? Who's the guy from the label? Anyway, Rick Rubin, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Rick Rubin. He was talking about how he asked him, like, Em, why are you carrying around this notebook? Um, do you, are you just writing songs like all day long? You must have so many. And he said, no, 95% of it is, is gibberish. <laughs> He's like, I'm writing because I'm practicing writing. So if you're a creative person, I'm not saying you have to sit down and write every day at 12 o'clock for 20 minutes to try to channel your songs. You can carry a notebook around with you as long as you're doing it every day. That's consistency. Mm. It, it doesn't matter how long you're doing it because do you think that five minutes a day over 10 years is better than an hour once a week over five years? Ooh, we need to ask Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> Before I start dropping that kind of knowledge. The point is the small things that you do every day have a greater effect than practicing for an hour. And I know that as a voice coach, artist development, like you could practice and you'll be real good that week and you don't practice for two weeks, you're rusty. You're better oh, yeah. off practicing 10 minutes a day. So I'm throwing all these numbers around to say, if you're creative, I'm not saying you have to have like a morning schedule because that's all a bunch of like influencer BS. That's what works for me right now. But... Mm -hmm getting up and like opening the blinds we know sunlight mm -hmm. affects how you feel um, waking up and every morning i do a theta gratitude exercise where before i open my eyes i force a smile on my face and i think of three things i'm grateful for mm. and then i open my eyes it takes 10 seconds that does not kill anybody's creativity that brings it up and as an artist your job is to get into zone right you want to get into flow uh, into the zone, into flow. There's a whole like books on this. And in order to get into flow, consistency gets you there. If you're just the artist that randomly waits for a song to fall down from the sky, you will get some, but you will not get as many as someone like Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran, who said that he writes 100 garbage songs for every one good song. Mm -hmm. He said trash, like they are garbage. So don't be afraid to write trash. Write it, just get it out. Get the 99 bad songs out so you can write a hit. That's what I tell my clients. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And I've, I've always given that advice that, you know, writing for five minutes a day is so much better than trying to sit down and I'm going to write a song today, you know, that kind of thing. And I will say as a vocalist, like the fact that I now work at a church and I'm forced to basically practice almost daily, right? Getting ready for church and all that kind of thing every week. Like the consistency has made my voice so much more effortless than I think it would be at age 51, number one. And, and number two, like when I used to tour and I would tour for like a week and, and then I'd be off the rest of the month or I'd tour for two weeks and then I'd be off for a month, you know, and yeah. then I wouldn't sing in between. And it always take me that time to just get back, ramp back up. Yep. Even and though I, I was think... in my thirties back then and now I'm in my fifties. 
Yeah, I agree with you. And I think as artists, like if, you know, from what I've heard and remembering back when I was an artist, the hardest part is getting motivated because you're doing all the business stuff and the art stuff and mm. the business stuff drains you. It's not the meditation. It's the business stuff, but you have to do it. I mean, you do. You have to do it till you can pay someone to do it. You either do it yourself or you get a day job that frees up your creative brain and pay someone else to do it. Mm -hmm. Right? So I know that it's finding that drive. And in order to find the drive, what celebrities do, what pro basketball play, like pro athletes do, what all the people at the top do, uh, if you really talk to them, the ones that stay there after their burnout, <laughs> they are doing some kind of morning routine. Mm. And it doesn't have to be an hour. It can be that little gratitude thing. Right before you open your eyes, you open your curtains, you look at the sun for one minute. Maybe you go have your coffee. Maybe you write for five minutes. It doesn't have to be dramatic. Like people make it so complicated. It's not. It's one minute of breathing when you're stressed out. It's getting up from your desk every hour for five minutes. It's, it's taking care. It's eating when you're hungry. Like mm. how many of us skip breakfast and call it intermittent fasting and we're like i'm not losing any weight like no you're just starving your body like it works for some people and to those who it works for like you know god bless you good for you but like a lot of us we have hormones our body needs food our body's like i'm starving and then at four o'clock we're like chips and cookies mm -hmm. <laughs> right so it's just little things it's if you think of yourself as a child it's the easiest way to think of it like i know it's hard to think about when you're in your 20s but if you were babysitting, what would you do for that kid? Mm. Right. Would, would yeah. you, would you let them out. eat that? Would you let them yeah. not sleep? But yeah. And, so, and sometimes you do. Sometimes you take them to the carnival and like cotton candy. Here's all the things like go crazy. But you wouldn't give them that every day because you don't no. want them to have, you know, turn into a diabetic. Right. It's not about everything for women. It's like, oh, it's how you look. It, it's the least interesting thing about you is how you look mm. okay it's who you are it's your soul it's how do you vibrate at a higher level and it sounds very hippie but i believe it because i do these like higher vibration raise your vibration meditations and they work i could be in the crappiest mood and then listen to one of those and then i'm like all right whew, let me pump myself up for you guys maybe you don't want to sit down for 20 minutes throw on your favorite song and dance dance just mm. go crazy shake it out Animals do it when they're stressed, they shake. Little kids start acting weird and going crazy when they're stressed. Like, we're like, let's just sit here and be stressed and then drink two bottles of wine. No, no, we gotta get it out. <laughs> I love it. I love that you've adopted all this stuff that you, you're into the woo. I'm curious, would you, your 25 year old self, would you have thought that you would be into all this stuff? Well, when I was 22 and I worked for BET, the vice president, she was like 34 and she was this goddess. She's actually still there at BET, Kim Lewis. She's like senior, senior position. And she was so beautiful, island girl, like just, and she like was into some of that stuff, like a lot of the healthy stuff, shopping at Whole Foods. And I was like, oh, one day I'm gonna be like that. Mm. But instead I was like, stay out till four in the morning and sleep in the bathroom stall at lunch or my car. Um, you're but you know you're supposed to abuse yourself when you're young but no 25 year old me would have absolutely um been impressed with who i am now which is kind of cool because i'm proud of myself i wish it wouldn't have taken hitting rock bottom with my health but i'm stubborn i'm an artist at the end of the day and now I can do something positive with it. I can get on stages and speak to thousands of women and say, hey, guys, here's how you can maintain this high level of performance. You got to take yeah. care of yourself. Yeah. And I love that you're you're using that, that you went through that. You're using that to help <laughs> other people. And I think musicians, we have so much to share in that way, too. I was I was sharing with Ari at the beginning that like when I was performing, my thing was to do a um, like a keynote concert. I would oh, talk wow. about things that I dealt with in my life. And then I would use the songs that, as you know, we all write songs about things that we deal with in our life most of the time. Right. And so it all fits together. And, and it was something that could really help and up, uplift people. And I think so many of you artists have that in you to not just share in song, but share in, in speaking like Aria is doing. Do you have any tips? Like what is it like moving into that new 
genre of what you're doing right now? It's really fun because I've already done, you know, I, I did it for music and then I did it for acting and now I'm doing it for speaking. You know, I did it when I started my company to help other artists. So like, it's not being afraid to shift and um, try something new. And I've known, which is really weird, but since I was eight, I knew I would be a motivational speaker. Mm. I knew that, af yeah, I thought, I, I never thought I would do acting, but I thought I'm gonna be a singer and then after I'm gonna be a motivational speaker, which is so weird for an eight-year-old to know. But I think it's, it's always been in me because I just wanna help people, whether it was through music, I wanted to make music that moved people um, and kind of help them express their feelings. And then as an actor, I wanted to make people laugh. And then as my, the golden voice, I wanted to help people achieve their dreams. And now it's like help people be happy and healthy and perform at the top without burning out. So I think, um, I think it's scary to move into new industries sometimes, but confidence comes from consistency. So if you're not confident as an artist, I highly recommend looking at your schedule, looking at your life, and saying, how can I be consistent? Because no one can make you confident. You will gain confidence when you keep promises to yourself. That is the only way. Mm. You won't even gain confidence when you win stuff. I have like the most talented, you know, famous artists and they're like so insecure. Mm. But the consistency comes from making promises you keep to yourself. So that's a quick tip. Oh my gosh. I feel like that's a mic drop because that is so true. <laughs> it is so true. And they're the hardest promises to keep. Because yep. you can fudge it because it's mm -hmm. just you. <laughs> no you one's going to call you out. No, but it shows in everything you do because have you ever met somebody that like just fakes the confidence and you're like, wow, that person's fake, like arrogant, but mm -hmm. it's fake. How many like rappers have we seen like that? And just like artists, it's usually the dudes walking around like, oh, my shit's the bomb. I'm amazing. And I'm like, do you really? And then I like have a conversation and they fall apart. No. <laughs> It's like, I want real confidence. I want y'all to feel true love for yourself of like, yes, I can do this because you are powerhouse women. You're here, you're not, you know, doing whatever. You're like, you're not watching TV right now. You're listening to something that's gonna make your life better. The audience on this podcast who would be listening to this are my people. Mm. You guys are like go-getters, you're resilient. You're gonna get back up no matter how many times you've been kicked down. You're gonna make it through because you're like, you have a dream and you want to make a difference in the world and you're not going to let anybody stop you from getting there. So you have to take care of yourself and make sure that you are in the position to be a star or to rise to the top of however, whatever position you're trying to get to, you need to be in a very cared for state and no one else is going to care for you except that weird boyfriend that you get that's like, I'll make all your meals <laughs> and then drain you. <laughs> uh... That's not it. That's not it, ladies. It's taking care of yourself. And it's hard. And there's some stuff you can outsource, but you can't outsource self-love. Mm, that is true. Gosh, you've got a few uh, really <laughs> great lines there. You cannot outsource self-love. And many times, boy, I wish I could. Ugh, I've tried. <laughs> I, I've really gotten good at outsourcing other stuff. So Good for you. I want to hear about you on stages. Like, How cool was that? You were doing keynote concerts. Yeah, and I still do them every once in a while. I I basically just talk about my life growing up. Um, I've had glaucoma since birth. So I talk about, you know, just what that experience was like growing up, getting my first job, things like that. Um, and just all the the feelings that you go through and and just, you know, a lot of my music is inspirational and really about perseverance, right? Which makes sense. So I just kind of built a program around that. And I would deliver it to a lot of women's groups, moms' groups, churches, um, nonprofits. In fact, I'm doing it in a few weeks, I think, um, for a nonprofit around here in LA. So um, it's it was it was just a very natural thing for me to to do to marry those two things. And I know that there are people out there that have great stories. I mean, I, you, many of you have emailed me, you know, telling me how you've dealt with, with cancer or, you know, just different things that you've overcome in your life. And I know that can be helpful for other people, or I know that your songs are about like some really important social justice issues that you could do a talk around. So 
you know, maybe you don't think you're a speaker. I didn't think I was a speaker either when I first started. And now guess what? I've done so many podcasts, right? Because it all builds and stacks on each other. That's amazing. I, I think you guys should listen to Brie because you can do a 30 minute talk and a 30 minute concert and start at $5,000. Mm-hmm. And that, and you can be in a room, a sold out room that you didn't have to book of 500 people. That's the average kind of speaking gig would be, you know, 500 people. And there's like over a million of these events every single year. So if you're struggling trying to get out there and get booked at like crappy bars or like shows around town, do the self-help circuit or do the, like the church circuit, depending on where you're at you know, with your spirituality, like it just if you want to reach people, reach people and don't worry about how cool it looks on the outside. Worry about getting your message out and your your music and your voice that's going to heal people. And if you don't think you have something to talk about, I'm sure Brie can, can help you because everybody has a story. It's yep. where did you come from? What are the hard things you went through? How did you get over it? And what advice do you have for somebody? 30 minutes, guys, you could even just write out bullet points and then talk about it. Like, like I'm doing with you right now. Yeah. Everybody's got something. I mean, you came from an immigrant family, you went through a divorce, you, you know, there, there's everybody is, if you've lived life, you've got something that you can talk about and inspire other people. And, and, and story is so powerful. Like everybody loves a story. I yeah. love a story. I can, I can be like, you know, just thinking, oh, I don't really want to listen to this. And then someone goes into a captivating story and I'll be like riveted. All right. Yeah. Cause story is just that connection, the connection that, that really pulls people in. Yeah. And, and a lot of artists will say like, why me? Like what makes me different when I really talk to them, not what they tell the world, they tell <laughs> the world it's only me, but they tell me like, I, there's a million of me. Why, how do I differentiate myself? And it's like, be more you. Your you-ness is what people want because we're in a world lacking authenticity. Like watch this, I'm gonna rip off my eyelash right now. Authenticity. Take it off, who cares? Nice. Not that there's anything wrong with makeup, but so what? I just got my hair done. I don't, or done today. I don't look like this every day. Like this is, this is me, guys. People just want the real you. This is fun for me. You guys are artists. This is like glitter and makeup and whatever, but I'm just a normal person, just like you, following my dreams, just like you. And if you're struggling with any of it, just be more you. Mm, that's fantastic. Well, <laughs> I can't think of any better place to, to, to stop this conversation because it has to stop eventually because I feel like we could talk forever. But can you please let everybody know how they can find you online, how they can connect with you and, and just get more of what you have to, to help artists with? Yeah, absolutely. Guys, um, pretty much everything is Aria Johnson dot com. Um, Aria Johnson is my handle for Facebook. Instagram, it's Aria Johnson official. LinkedIn, Aria Johnson. Um, you guys can email me from my website. I have lots of content like this about how you can perform at the top, peak per- peak performance minus the burnout. And I'm happy to help any of you guys. I was in the music industry for 25 years. I still work with clients, even though I'm phasing out. Um, yeah, you can reach out to me with any questions. I'm happy to help. If anyone wants to book me for stages, I'm happy to do that as well and get this message out to the masses. Thank you so much, Bree, for having me here today. I feel like you are, you're amazing. I, uh, yeah, your story is amazing. I stalked you a little bit online first. <laughs> <laughs> Good stalking. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you so much. And and I'm it. so glad we were able to have this conversation. I feel like we're really on the same page about so much of this stuff. And I'm glad we're able to, to get this information onto people. So hopefully some of you cannot burn out and you can get to the peak of your career without regrets without feeling like, oh, I did all this for nothing. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you so (laughs) much. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. 
thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician. 